Glory to God. Welcome to Christ Life Spring Fellowship worship service this morning. Let us get into an attitude of worship and praise. Let us worship the Lord this morning. Let us exalt him this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father God, we give you glory. We give you praise this morning, O Lord. We thank you, O God, that we can be here, O God, in your presence, O God, to lift you up, O God, to worship you, O Lord, to exalt your holy name, O Lord. We thank you, O God, for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord, for the joy of the Lord is our strength this morning. We thank you, O God, for pouring out your mercy and your grace upon us this morning, O Lord. We thank you for your anointing that destroy every yoke. O oh, oh Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you cover us with your blood this morning, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh God, you cover the atmosphere with the blood of Jesus this morning, O oh Lord. You cover everyone here with the blood of Jesus. You cover everyone that's listening right now with the blood of Jesus. Every home, every family, we cover with the blood of Jesus. We come against every work of Satan in the name of Jesus. We come against every plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We come against every attack in the name of Jesus. We destroy every works of Satan in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh Father God, that your Holy Spirit will just have your way this morning in every heart and every life this morning, oh Lord. Let your anointing destroy every yoke this morning, oh Lord. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control this morning, oh Lord. Draw us closer to you this morning, oh Lord. Let your anointing pour out upon us this morning, oh Lord. Help us to worship you this morning, oh Lord. Help us to be in your presence this morning, O oh Lord. Draw us closer to you this morning, O oh Lord. As we worship you this morning, O oh Lord, let your blessing come down and pour out upon us this morning, O oh Lord. Open up the heavens this morning, O oh Lord, and outpour upon us this morning, O oh Lord. We are here to receive from you this morning, O oh Lord. We want more of you this morning, O oh Lord. We are gathering no other name but in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for what you have in store for us this morning, oh Lord. We receive it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for that anointing this morning, oh Lord. We thank you for your presence here this morning, oh Lord. Holy Spirit, come and take control. Draw us in, oh Lord. Oh, glory to you, Lord. We we worship you, Lord. We exalt you, O Lord. You are worthy, O Lord. We exalt you, O Lord. Worship him this morning. Exalt him this morning. He is worthy to be praised this morning. Lift up your hands and worship him. Lift up your voice to him this morning. He wants to hear from you this morning. Why don't you give him thanks for what he has done for you? He woke you up this morning morning. Thank you, Jesus. Give him praise this morning. Give him thanks this morning for what he has done for you. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll praise Praise be to you, Jesus. We thank you, O God, and we can be here in your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worship him this morning. Exalt him this morning. Hallelujah. 
rejoice in him this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing. Lord, we come to give you thanks for all you've done. Of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with songs of freedom. Forever we'll change because of your love. Because of your love. Give them time this morning. As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing. Lord, we come to give you thanks. For all you've done Because of your love We're forgiven Because of your love Our hearts are clean We lift you up With songs of freedom Forever we're changed of your love we're forgiven because of your love our hearts are clean we lift you up with songs of freedom forever we'll change because of your love Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up the songs of freedom. Forever we change. Because of your love, forever we change. Because of your Love. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, for that love. We thank you for loving us, O oh Lord. We thank you for saving us, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, for making a way for us, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh God, that we can come into your presence, O oh God, and that we can worship you this morning, O oh Lord, for you alone are worthy to be praised this morning, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for where the tools and trees are gathered. There you are, O oh Lord, because we are gathered in no other name but in the name of Jesus yes, and we yes. thank you oh God that we can be in your presence this morning yeah, blah, blah, we can blah, blah, exalt blah. you this morning oh Lord we thank you yeah, oh God blah, 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 we worship blah, blah, you almighty God for yeah, there is yeah, none blah, like blah, you this morning oh Lord yeah, you are our way maker oh Lord yeah, you are our light in the darkness oh Lord yeah, you are our promise keeper oh Lord name, you are our way maker oh God and we yeah, worship you this morning oh Lord we exalt you this morning oh Lord we thank you, O Lord. We we give you praise this morning, O Lord. We give you glory this morning, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. 
worship him this morning hallelujah for there is none like him this morning hallelujah glory to you jesus hallelujah hallelujah
Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. And this time I turn you over to, to stealing. Well, praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone, and happy Father's Day to all you fathers, those of you who are here and those who are watching online. We want to wish you all the best today and that you keep your hearts open and allow the Lord to use you and to guide you in every step of your way. Uh, this is the day we celebrate Father's Day. And as I always say, Mother's Day and Father's Day is every day. So, Let's just give God praise and thanks for all the fathers. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to thank God for all of you that are here. And um, I just want to bring you up to date with some announcements. And mm -hmm. praise the Lord. Anyways, um, you could go on our website. You'll find all our information there on how to get to us. But for the rest of the um, services on Tuesday and evening at 7 30 we have our prayer meeting at, on zoom and if you want to join us just let us know because we have to send you that link and um, also on wednesday night at 7 30 is our bible study and that's on facebook and that you could go and get that you don't need a link for that and also on sunday at 10 a.m we have our worship service and i want you to remember that pray one for the other and keep each and every one in your in your prayers because you know some people may not have wake up this morning some people may not have been able to move from their bed some people may not have anything to eat but you give god thanks and praise that you're still alive and you wake up to see a nice bright sunshiny day today praise the lord now we just have a few um items on the program so i'll call on sister angelica sister devine brother sam for their poem Our poem is called, What Makes a Dad? God took the strength of a mountain, the majesty of a tree, the warmth of a summer sun, the calm of a quiet sea, the generous soul of nature, the comforting arm of night, the wisdom of the ages, the power of the eagle's flight, the joy of a morning in spring, the faith of a mustard seed, the patience of eternity, the depth of a family need, uh, then God combined these qualities, when there was nothing more to add, he knew his masterpiece was complete, and so he called it that. Happy Father's Day! Okay, praise the Lord. So we want to thank God for that poem. So God knows what he was doing when he made man, right? So we want to thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Thanks to all of you. Now we have another poem by Sister Ariana. Praise the Lord. Hi, my poem's called A Father Is by Sue Steen. There, there in every memory see his love and care, strength and hand to count on, Freely he does provide, freely he does share provider, toll so faithfully to make our dreams come true, gives strong and tender discipline, though it is hard to do. A father is God's chosen one to lead the family and point it to his will of, for life of love and harmony. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I gotta hold your veil. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. We want to thank God for all the fathers. Praise the Lord. Now I have a little few something to say. I'll bring the last item after I'm finished and um, then we get into our sermon. So. As we all know, today is Father's Day, 
and we are celebrating fathers. Now, what fathers? You have so many people that are fathers that may be there for their family. Some may not be there for their family. And the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, what is provocation? It's an action or a speech that makes someone annoyed or angry, especially if you're doing it deliberately. Now, we are not, God has ordered the fathers or to not to provoke your children, but bring them up in the fear of the Lord. And you know, sometimes it goes to both fathers and mothers. Sometimes we could provoke our children. We could keep telling them things, one thing over and over and over again, and they get annoyed with us, right? And you know, so we, God wants us <laughs> to... God wants us to bring up our children in the in his faith in the fear of the Lord to bring up the child or our children the way God wants us to to bring them up right so let's not as parents provoke our children you say something one time two times just let it go let the Lord have his way just the most we could do for our children them is to pray for them and really pray for them that God, it's only we could tell them, but it's only God could do the work. Amen. Right? No matter how much we hammer into them, do this, do this, do this. But unless we pray and trust the Lord, is this, is, is this the will of God for my child or my children? Is this the way God wants them to go? Or is this the way I want them to go? So we got to pray along that line and trust the Lord. Now, I've made up my own father's acrostic or whatever you call it. So I'm going to go one by one. Now, fathers, and I start with the first letter, which is F. Faithful to God, faithful to family. Fathers, fulfill your God-given gift that God has given to you to be a father. Not only a physical father, but a spiritual father. Because... The world is watching us, especially fathers that are living for the Lord. So as fathers, as you train your children, them, train them up in the ways of the Lord. As you bring them up physically and uh, provide for them and do also do the same in the physical, in the spiritual realm, that you pray for them, you teach them, you tell them to read the Bible, you tell them, you know, you could get together for a prayer meeting. And, you know, not a long prayer that they fall asleep on you, but just get together, pray, and pray for your children them, and see and fulfill the, the, the gift that God has given to you, those of you who are fathers and those of you who will become fathers later. Remember this. Just be faithful to God and to your family. Praise the Lord. A, attitude. Attitude towards your family, your wife, your children, and those that are around you, wherever you go. Portray an attitude that God, the people will see God in you, and they will glorify God and say, there's a man that really loved the Lord, and that there's a man, there's a father that really worshiped the Lord. There's a father that you could count on to lead you to the Lord, and to pray with you, and to bear you up in prayer. So let our attitude not make anything that's, comes our way that what people say we get you know upset and angry and but let's put on a good attitude attitude that the lord will be proud of us hallelujah trust as they say someone says trust does not comes with a refill trust is something we have to earn if you break somebody trust it's very hard for you you have to gain that person trust back again and you have to really work hard on it. And so I want you to know that trust is very, very important in everybody's life. So make sure your family trusts you. Wherever you go, whoever you talk to, 
whoever you communicate with, whatever you do outside of the home, make sure that your family could trust you and you keep trusting in the Lord and the Lord is going to strengthen you. Hallelujah. Honesty. Help your children. Don't bring them down. Honesty, tell your children, okay, you know, this way you're going, this way that maybe um, it's not right. If you see they're doing something wrong that's going the wrong way and it's not pleasing the right in, in God's eyes, just tell them, be honest with them. Don't hold it back. Say, listen, this is what the Bible says. This is what we need to do. This is the way you need to obey. And this is the way you need to trust the Lord. So honesty, be honest with your children. Be honest with everybody around you. I know some people are well outspoken. They won't hide anything. They will tell you. But it's not that they want to tell you all, but they want to tell you to get off what's on their mind. Because they're honest within themselves. And I know some sometimes we don't like it when people be honest, with, you know. But, you know, the, instead of harboring it within, they want to let it go. So they be honest with themselves and say, listen, I don't like this what you do. I don't like that what you do. So I'm going to be honest and straightforward with you. But it's not that the person hates you, but just that they want you to let you know. And so that you can see where you're improving, where you can improve in that area. So be honest. Encourage, encouragement. Encourage your child or children in whatever they want to do. If it's something that's not so good that you thought, just tell them, give them, give it a try. It's nothing wrong to try something, not bad things though, but something that will benefit your child or children. Give it a try. Encourage them in some way in the Lord. Encourage them so that they can know that God and you are there with them. Whatever they choose, whatever they want to do in life. Just encourage them. Our role model. Now this is something very important. Role model. We need as parents, both mothers, fathers. We need to be role, role model to our children and those around us. Don't ever say something and you do something else. It doesn't reflect who you are. If you say you are this person, be that person. Don't try to be Michael Jackson when you can dan moon dance. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let's be a role model for Christ. Let our children see Christ within us. Not to see uh, the, the, that nature, that physical nature within us that, okay, I'm, I'm saying I'm this, but I'm not really that. I'm this person. But let them see Christ. Let's be a role model. Let's portray Christ so that they, the children and everyone around us will see Christ in you. And as support, support them in life. Whatever they choose to do, as long as... It's good as long as the perfect will of God. It's long. It's something that you know that will benefit them. Support them. And your support is by prayer and trusting the Lord to keep them true. And whatever decisions they make, that the Lord speak to their hearts. We need to pray along that line. Let's not download our children or anyone else. That, okay, you have to do this my way. Do it this way. This is the way. There's only certain things you download, like you download your computer. But don't download your kids and say, okay, I want you to do this. I want you to know. Allow the Lord to speak to them. Whether dreams, whether visions, whether through the word, whether through somebody, somebody preaching or whatever. Let the Lord lead them. Just pray for them. And you just support them in by your prayer, by your encouragement. Don't tell them, don't say they're lazy because you are in kind of, um, if you say to your kids that you're lazy and you, you know, or the normal thing we say, you hear back home, you're good for nothing, right? Those are spirits that are being sent forth and we got to be careful that we don't say negative words to our children. We got to pray positive. We have to tell them positive things. So that they can walk in the line of the Lord. 
and keep their trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that's my little acrostic that I made up. And um, I hope you are being blessed. And Amen. you will trust the Lord. Now in closing. One person said to you fathers, the best thing you could do as a father is make sure they see how much you love their mother. The best thing you could do to your children is to make sure that they see how much you love their mother. And also, accept your child or children for who they are and not for what you want them to be. You know, as parents, we want them to be. It's like, you know, your child is an accountant, okay, you have, uh, or you is an accountant, you say, okay, I want you to go in this direction. You gotta be an accountant like me, you gotta be. No, they all have their own gifts. And we gotta pray that God reveal that gifts to them and that they will go and we pray and we, you know, keep trusting and encouraging them to go along that, but keep the Lord in the center of everything that they do and not to sidetrack or to go anywhere. Prayer is very important and we need to pray for our children very, very much, especially in these times and age that we are living in. The Lord bless you real good. Happy Father's Day to my husband. Happy Father's Day, Ashok. And all you fathers, we want to wish you all the best and you have a great day today. The Lord bless you real good. At this time, Sister Becky, is going to come and sing for us. Praise the Lord. Happy Father's Day to all the dads. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Happy Father's Day, Shook. And I give God praise and thanks for all the dads. And I want to give God praise and thanks for my Heavenly Father. Amen. Glory to God.
all those tears that fall and he hears you when you call glory to god praise the lord thank you jesus hallelujah he knows our name he knows us more than we know ourselves. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So at this time we get into the word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, O Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the honor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you the glory, O oh Lord. We give you the honor for your goodness, for your mercy. We thank you for the anointing to break and destroy every yoke and every plan of Satan this morning, O oh God. We pray, God, that your word will go forth with power and authority in the name of Jesus. Anoint you, my lips of clay. Anoint your servants, O oh God, as we bring forth your word, O oh God. Let your Holy Spirit take full control over his life, O oh God. You speak through him, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Words of encouragement to the fathers in Jesus' name. We thank you, O oh Father. We bless you and we magnify your holy name. Let your name be lifted up. Let your name be glorified this morning, O oh God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. We bless your holy name, O oh Lord. We magnify your precious name in the name of Jesus. We come against every dark forces in Jesus' name. Every discouragement, O oh God, every disappointment in the name of Jesus. Every frustration, every plan of Satan this morning, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Liberate the atmosphere, O oh God. Touch every life that's here and those who are watching, O oh God. Ministered in a mighty way. We give you thanks, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor this morning. We dedicate the service into your hands, O oh God. We pray for all the fathers today yes. that you will bless them, O oh God. That they will rise up, O oh God, and be the men that you call them to be, O oh God. Hallelujah. To be the father that they need to be, both physical and spiritual, O oh God. Hallelujah. Touch their lives, O oh God. Raise up more men, O oh God. Yes. Men, O oh God, that will do your work, O oh God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, men Hallelujah. that will go out, O oh God, and win other souls into your kingdom, O oh God. Ba, 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 Speak ba, ba, to the hearts of the men in the name of Jesus. Ba, 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 and everyone, O oh God, I praise you. We thank you this morning. We bless all. All Thank the you, today. Jesus. I praise you and I magnify your holy Thank name. Take you, praise, Lord. Lord. Take glory. Take honor. Because Thank it all you, belongs Lord. to you today. We say Thank you. In Jesus' name. Thank mm -hmm. you, Lord. Praise the Lord. I turn you over to my husband, Pastor David Jawa here. Happy Father's Day. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Same to me. Okay. <laughs> Second one. Oh, praise the Lord. God is good. And his mercies endure it forever. Happy Father's Day to all you great, wonderful fathers. Happy Father's Day to Ashok. You saying something today? Happy you Father's preaching Day. today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Well, they told me not to be too long today. I will try to. God, <laughs> praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father's Day is a very, very special day. You know, as I was still thinking of this day, and the many things that pass through my mind. The first person that you become acquainted to as a father is your own father. And that is very important. You become acquainted to him and he began to show you an example. 
And I like this little poem that I have here. It says, at age four, my daddy can do anything. When I was small, I believe my father was like Superman. He can do anything. And then at age seven, my daddy knows a lot, a whole lot. Like all my problems, all school problems, he knows he can solve them. He was swatter. It that is it, my father does not know quite everything. And so at age eight, my thinking begins to change. My father don't know everything because I begin to get some problems that he can't solve. And so I have to look to teachers and other people to solve those problems. At age 12, oh well, naturally, Father does not know that either. Naturally, Father does not know that either. It's well, you begin to find Father don't know a lot of things. Angie, you find that with Daddy? <laughs> He didn't know everything. Your daddy didn't know everything. <laughs> all right, all right. At age 14, oh, father, he's hopelessly old-fashioned. <laughs> Soon time you begin to realize that daddy is too old-fashioned, that he can And, you know, as I look at my own children, I was looking this week and was thinking about them. They, say, they might say, they did not tell me plainly, but you could hear them saying, old fashioned, old fashioned. <laughs> he don't dress the right way. You know, old fashioned. At 21, 21, oh, that man, he's out of date. So, when you, they reach a certain age, you become outdated. You don't really live up to their expectation and to their way of dressing and so forth. At age 25, he knows a little bit about it, but not much. So... You only know a little bit. You think about it. Age seven, age four, you know everything. You're Superman. But by the time you reach age 24, and by the time they reach age 24, you become smaller, smaller in their eyes. At age 30, I must find out what think, dad think about it. Here is where you find a shift begin to take place. They become independent, but at 30, they begin to realize what the old man was doing was right. No, they don't know nothing. <laughs> what the old man was doing was right. It's 35. Before we decide, we will get dad's idea first. So, when they become older, they say, what dad think of that about this? Now daddy is right. No, daddy is right, yes. What dad think about it? At age 50, what 
would that do? What dad thought about that? At age 60, my dad know literally everything. So at age 60, you come back to the place where they see you when they were age four and seven. They realize with maturity, with maturity comes knowledge. And knowledge is very important. Experience, you don't buy it. At age 65, I wish I could talk. It's over with that once again. When they are at 65, you're not around. Maybe you're gone. You're dead already. So your life, in a way, it comes back to you with age and with maturity. And we will find that today, as I speak for a while, how God sees us and how through this man Solomon he see his father. His father was King David. His father was a good man. Solomon was a wise man. And we also see how Solomon look at his mother. There's a lot to talk about. But I'll make it very, very, very short. I tried to. Good. So in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Hear ye, my hairy children, the instruction of a father, and attend to know understanding. Verse 2, for I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. That is the law of the Father. Verse 3, for I was my father's son, tender, and only Beloved in the in the mothers in the sight of my mother. So we will take this three verse and talk about it a little. Father, bless your words to our heart and speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. From the message translation of the Bible. The same thing that I read, it is very, very simple. Proverb 1 to 3. Listen, my friends, to some fatherly advice. Sit down. Sit up. All of you, sit up. <laughs> and notice so, so you will know how to live. So that you will know how to live. I'm giving you good counsel. Couldn't let it go through one ear and out the other. So... Solomon is saying, man, don't make it go through one ear and uh, out the other ear. Ariane, did mommy ever tell you that? What a, what a saying it 
goes through one ear and don't and don't stick in the middle and don't form root and and you understand it you just let it go when i was a boy at my mother's knee my father's knee the pride and joy of my mother now I like to talk a little about the father. The father, Solomon, the first thing said, listen, hear what I have to say. Just listen. Now, there are a lot of voices in the world and a lot of people that say things, but not everything we must take. I believe that a person must have a good record of what they are saying, and they must be mature and, and thinking properly and soundly before you can take their advice. So there's a lot of voices in the world, but what we have today is very few fatherly advice. I'll repeat that. What we have in the world today is very few fatherly advice and I believe that one of the reasons it is so is because you have few men that are willing to be men and few men that are willing to be fathers Many times in the conversation between women, you will hear my child's father, my child's father, so and so, so and so. They don't say my husband. They say my child's father. That is because in the home, one of the persons that is missing is the father. And in today's society, the father is not taking up their legal or their rightful role as a child, as a man of the home. They're not taken up the rightful role. And so you hear about the father, but not as a person that is living in the home, not as a person that takes up the necessary role as a father and provides and advice and so forth in the home. In fact, in many homes today, and if you really look into the North American society, half of the home don't have fathers. And many times it's somebody else filling the gap of the father. So I say today that we need to examine our lives and we need to examine our family life and be fathers and be good fathers too. Hallelujah. So the wise man Solomon, he said, listen, hearken, give heed 
to what I'm saying. Because what I'm saying is not important only now, but is important when you become a big man. You as a child, you will grow up and you will become a big man. And you need to have somebody, somebody with some mind to advise you, to give you counsel. Hallelujah. Secondly, a father is an instructor. What is a father? An instructor. All of you have gone to school. And schools are very important. We go there and we have a teacher and the teacher would give instructions. Now, that was my role as a man. I was an instructor, I was a lecturer, I was a teacher, and, and so forth. But I find, as a teacher, you're not the father. And that is what many children fail, fail to realize that their teacher is not their father. And the proper instructions, how to live, what I must do in this situation and that situation, it comes from a father. But if, if the father is missing, where will the instructions come from? And repeat them. If the father of the home, the father of the child, the father who is supposed to be the instructor is not in the home and not giving heed to his role as a, as a father. Well, that is one of the reasons why today's society is a mess. Because instructions, how to live, what to do, in various situations is not coming from a man. Instead it's coming, not coming from a man of authority, it's coming from somebody else. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The wise man say, attend, listen, take notice, to know, to understand. Why is it many, many children today just don't understand? Because they don't take time to listen, to take heed, to take notice. You don't register something when it comes to them. It just go away from them. Because they are words of life. Why we must listen, listen to our father? Because most fathers, I want to say, most fathers speak words of life. How we must live. Instructions that we must follow. And that is why we must listen. Now come back to this word, understand. Lot of children fail to understand because they fail to digest. 
when they eat their food, the food digests. But when words are spoken to them, they don't take the time to let it soak in, to let it go over and over in this spirit so they can understand the counsel, the counsel that was given. To understand the counsel, you have to let it come in and go over and over and over again. Now fathers are necessary because they are the people that bring good doctrine, good counsel. Now what is doctrine? Doctrine is teaching, song teaching, good advice, proper advice need to come from the Father. The Father has confidence. His instructions, his teaching, and his teaching because they are proven, proven, and tested. Now, I give you an illustration earlier. I said, when a child is four, when a child is seven, when a child is 10, 12, he begin to lose confidence in his father. But when he go older, the confidence regain back. Because experience in life is very very important and good counsel, good teaching, good doctrine will help us to listen, to understand song advice and to follow and to be a person that's able to adopt our situation. As you grow, you realize the things that daddy used to tell me was good, was right. And if I had listened to that man, I would have been a better person. No, during this week I was counseling with my children and I said I regret many things that I have done in life and the way I behave I regret it. I did not take the advice of my father in many ways and as I I, I, I realize I made mistakes and those mistakes lead to problems in my life. And those mistakes are not easy to correct. You see, in life, when you make a mistake, it is not it is easy to correct. One of such mistakes is marriage. Who you married to? And so forth. It's very important. I did not heed the key to the counsel of my father. What you do with the career, how you behave, what you do with the time I was talking about with my with my children about time. 
You see, time wait for no man. Time cannot be regained. Time that you spent to something might be unprofitable and might be useless. You wasting your life, your time. And so many times we do things in life that don't bring success to us. Instead, it, it beat us down. When you say, well, my friend is doing it. My friend is doing that. I have to do it too. Your friend is leading you wrong. Your friend is putting the pressure on you. And that pressure is bringing a wrong result in your life. Hallelujah. So therefore, we need to listen to the counsel of our parents. Then he say, forsake ye not my law. Don't let go in one, don't let it go in one ear and come out the other ear. This is something I'll, I have to leave with you. Listen, learn to listen to wise counsel. There are a lot of people in this world will lead you astray and lead you into ways that is very, very wrong. And because they have traveled the way, the, that way, and they are going that way, they are leading you along. They are leading you through a bloody bat. But instead, we need to come to good counsel. And come to the words of life. You know, one time, Jesus said to his disciple, when all people is deserting him and leaving him, he said, aren't you going to? Aren't you going to go with them? And Peter said, where we go to, Lord? You have the words of life. And so I said today, the right way, the words of life, the words of hope, the words of peace is the right way. Not the words of evil. Not things that will break apart and take you apart. But good counsel. That is why we need to take heed. I'm coming to a conclusion now. Solomon said, I was my father's son. I want you to realize that you are somebody child and that you have a father. And that father that you have is very important. And he needs that respect. And he needs to behave like a father. So if your father today is out of line and going wrong and doing wrong things, I say, you tell your father, you need to spend time with your child. And you need to give some advice. So I find here that the role of the father is one of instructions, one of giving out right advice, one of good counsel, and one of good words. Now Solomon said one lasting 
in the three verses that I read. He said, I am the beloved in the sight of my mother. The beloved of the mother. One thing I realize, fathers need to be good advisor, good counselor, good teachers, people of good doctrine, but the mother is a person of love, of love. And sometimes I get a little jealous as a, as a parent. Why is it that children go more to mommy? Why do you cleave more to mommy? And that is because of wanting love, love. The mommy is the beloved mother because of the type of love she shows to that child. And because of that, you will find children go more, more. But when it comes to advice and song advice, Father, and many people don't like straight talk. They don't like you tell them straight what is it, how to behave, how to live. They like love. They like pet. So that is the way Solomon. It is good for love. And maybe if those two things can be in the home, love, son advice, and teachable spirit, in the home, a home will be better for us to live in. So today, remember, Father, you are teacher. You are instructor. You are a person that gives good advice. You are a person that not only advise with words, but live it, live it, live it, live it. Your advice must be a good counselor, but you must know how to live what I say, right? I must live what I say. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, pray that your spirit would be upon us tonight, today, and that you will speak to every heart every mind and that you speak to fathers, you speak to homes and that good advice will come to them now in Jesus name Amen Well today was a good day and I hope that this message has reached into your hearts we need in this world in this country, more fathers that are fathers. We don't need somebody living in the house that's not a father. You need a father. You need a father. So today I call upon all fathers to pick up their role. And you need to have the song advice of the Father. God bless you. Remember, on Tuesday is our prayer meeting, and then we have our Bible study on Wednesday, and you need to be in those studies if you will grow. I know I say some things last last Wednesday that have many mind complex uh, talking about the rebellion the rebellion in the life 
of the beings that were there. Satan rebelled, angels rebelled. Now, you need to go back to the word. Read very carefully. In those chapters of the Bible, in six or three chapters, is listed 165 years. A hundred, I'm sorry, 1,100 and 665 years. So long, you only have three chapters of the Bible. But if you look into other parts of the Bible, you will be able to get some answers. So that is why the book of Revelation is written. It's so that we will see what God will do at the end of time. And the discipline that will come upon the world. The judgment is coming and is coming quickly. God bless you. See you Wednesday.